Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Belgian political parties. So today's episode was requested by both Sam Volkers and Ansfried Janssens on YouTube. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Filipino parties, Colombian parties, New Zealand parties, Nigerian parties, Irish parties, Danish parties, Polish parties, Japanese parties, Brazilian parties, Chilean parties, and many more. Also, I just have to give a huge shout out to Ansfried. He not only requested the episode, but he also helped me out tremendously. We talked over email, we had a two hour long Zoom call on Belgian politics, so big shout out to him. He helped me a lot, and thank you. Also, I would like to thank Pippin, Maria, and Michael from Agora. I had a Zoom call with them where they talked about the party and told me all about it. I think the day after I release that episode, I will release that interview as some standalone bonus content. Back almost a year ago, I made an episode talking about the history of Belgium, and I would recommend going back to it for some context. Just in case you are too lazy, too busy, and or you just don't want to watch it, the main context you should take away is that Belgium is a very divided country. There are three language groups in the country, Dutch speakers from Flanders, French speakers from Wallonia, and some German speakers in a region known as Ost Belgium. Now, notably most, although not all, Political parties have a Dutch counterpart, a French counterpart, and sometimes even a German counterpart. The level these counterparts will work with each other depends on the political bloc. For the start of the episode, I will be talking about the parties based around their political bloc. There is a significant number of Dutch speakers who strongly oppose Belgium existing. Long story short, Francophones historically were politically and economically dominant in the country, and speaking Dutch made it very hard to get a job in Wallonia and Brussels. After World War II, Flanders grew economically while Wallonia has kind of stagnated. So Flemish separatists argue that Flanders should leave Belgium to protect their culture, gain greater autonomy, and to prevent Flemish tax dollars going into Wallonia. There also is a controversial history of Flemish nationalists working with the Germans and Nazis in both World War I and II. Besides the language divide, another very important thing to note about Belgian politics, there is a high degree of autonomy and power when working at the local level. So, looking at America, there is a kind of hierarchy of importance in politicians. The president is more important than a state governor, who is more important than a mayor. And this kind of hierarchy where national level politicians have more importance than regional and local level politicians usually translates across the world, but not in Belgium. Local level politicians have an insane level of prestige when compared to their counterparts in other states. And while the federal government is important, they have to deal with a lot of other governments in the country who are all competing for resources and power. Belgium is a federation and is uniquely divided on two levels. First off, there is the regional divisions between Flanders, Wallonia, and Brussels, the capital, and a region where the majority speak French, but still a significant minority will speak Dutch. Then there is a division on the linguistic level, with the Flemish community government, a French community government, and a German community government. These six different community and regional governments have five different legislatures. The Flemish Parliament, which deals with both Flanders and Dutch speakers' issues including in Brussels, the Wallonia Parliament, the Brussels Parliament, the French Community Parliament, which also deals with French speakers' issues in Brussels, and the German Community Parliament. Confused? Well, according to Ansfried, if you understand Belgian politics, that means someone explained it poorly to you. So I'm just going to use that as a shield if I get any criticism. It's not my fault I got something wrong. It's just Belgian politics is too complicated for anyone to get right. On the federal level, you have the Chamber of Representatives, the lower house. Its 150 representatives are elected from the 10 provinces of Belgium, along with Brussels, via proportional representation, with a 5% electoral threshold. The representatives are also divided into two separate language groups, with 88 belonging to the Dutch language group and 62 belonging to the French and German group. The chamber will elect the Prime Minister of Belgium, who on paper is the most powerful political figure in the country, and will vote on rules and regulations. The upper house is the Senate. There are 60 senators. 50 senators are elected from the various community and regional parliaments. Another 6 are elected from the 29 Dutch senators elected from the Flemish and Brussels parliaments. Another 4 are elected from the 20 senators elected from the Brussels, Wallonia, and French community parliaments. And then finally, there is a single lone German senator elected from the German community parliament. 
The Senate is weaker than the Chamber, but will still vote on rules and regulations, and serves as a mediator between different governments in Belgium. There are also talks of abolishing the Senate in the future. Finally, Belgium is also a member of the EU, and sends 12 Dutch-speaking MEPs, 8 French-speaking MEPs, and 1 German-speaking MEP to EU Parliament. So let's start diving into the parties of Belgium. First we'll look at the Social Democratic, or Socialist, bloc. For the Dutch, there is Vorot, or Forward. Meanwhile, French and German speakers have Parti Socialiste, or Socialist Party, or PS. These two parties are center-left, and represent a combination of left-leaning moderates, social liberals, social democrats, and democratic socialists. They both emerged from the socialist pillar in the late 19th century. In 1978, the Belgian Socialist Party split between its Dutch and French wing, creating the two parties as we know them today. They historically tended to get most support among the working class and in the old industrial heartlands of the country, with a much stronger presence in Wallonia. However, its support base has slowly been eroding over time, and has attempted with limited success to make inroads with pensioners and migrants. PS has 19 representatives, 7 senators, is a part of the Brussels, Wallonia, French community, and the German community governments, and sends two members to EU Parliament. The Minister-President of Brussels and Wallonia also are members of the party. Verut has nine representatives, four senators, is a part of the government in Brussels, is present in the Flanders Parliament, and sends one member to EU Parliament, with both parties sitting in the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats, and both parties are currently a part of the ruling federal government. PS is led by Paul Magnette, the mayor of Charleroi and former Minister-President of Wallonia. Verut is led by Conor Rousseau, a member of Flemish Parliament, and also apparently is known for spending a lot of his time posting pictures of himself on Facebook and Instagram. The Social Democrats are both generally supportive of more government in the economy and a strong welfare state. Both parties talk of the concept of solidarity, and the economy being in service of the many rather than the few. They do still believe in capitalism though, and while they aren't as neoliberal as they were in the 90s, they do still back some sort of mixed economy. They also both tend to support more environmental protections, are pro-EU, and favor more progressive social policies. So where do the parties differ? Well, PS seems to be further left and more willing to embrace the term socialist than their Dutch-speaking counterparts. Verut, in terms of immigration, is more strict and more assimilationist than PS. Verut also has been drifting more and more towards aligning themselves with the Dutch environmentalist, and have been dissing themselves to a certain extent from PS, and even were called between 2001 to 2021, Socialist Party Differently, trying to portray themselves as different from PS. But why would they want this? Well, there's two main reasons. First off, the Socialists slash Social Democrats have never been super popular in Flanders. Both before and after the Socialist Party split in 1978, the Socialists were seen as the party for Francophones, since they were the strongest party in Wallonia, and so many Flemish people see them as representing the worst of Francophone dominance. Secondly, both parties, but especially PS, have suffered from massive corruption scandals. Some of these scandals include stealing from charity, taking bribes from foreign companies, being accused of covering up toxins present in food, and allegedly killing a former head of the party, Andre Kools, in the 90s. Besides this, the two parties are also accused of being poor administrators, failing to actually help working class people, and having moderated too much to appeal to the center. The next largest political bloc are the liberals. There is the French Mouvement Reformateur, or Reform Movement, or MR, the Dutch Open Vlaams Liberalen in Democraten, or Open Flemish Liberals and Democrats, or Open VLD, and the German Party for Vrijheid und Fortschritt, or Party for Freedom and Progress, or PFF. These three parties emerged from the liberal pillar of Belgium that came into being after Belgium independence in the mid-19th century, before they all broke off into separate parties in 1972. I'll explain more about their political ideology and position later on, but generally they are liberal, with individuals ranging from social liberals, to quasi-libertarians, to classical liberals, and even more liberal conservative types. They tend to do well among those with a higher income, and tend to be found around Brussels, in suburban areas outside the city, in eastern Flanders, or in some of the rural areas in southern Wallonia. MR has 13 representatives, 6 senators, is a part of the government in Wallonia and the French Community Parliament, is the largest opposition party in Brussels, and sends two members to EU Parliament. The Minister-President of the French community is also a member of the party. Open VLD has 12 representatives, 5 senators, is a part of the government in Brussels and Flanders, and sends two members to EU Parliament. 
with both them and MR sitting in the Renew Europe group. The Prime Minister, Alexander de Croo, is also a member of the party. PFF has one representative, one senator, and is a part of the German community government, and is along with the two other liberal parties a part of the federal government. MR is led by Georges-Louis Boucher, a senator and former member of the Wallonian parliament. Open VLD is led by Egbert Lockhart, a representative and former member of Flemish parliament. Finally, PFF is led by Catherine Yadin, the party's only representative and former local politician from Liège. The liberals are noted for being very pro-business. They tend to support free market economics, want less taxes, and want less regulations. They also are pro-EU and pro-NATO, make a big deal about individual freedom and centering the individual, and generally want to crack down on illegal immigration. The liberals, while economically they tend to all agree less government is better, are more divided socially. MR is seen as more conservative and defines itself as a party on the right. Strangely, MR is probably the furthest right party we will talk about today that operates among the French-speaking community. Meanwhile, Open VLD is seen as representing more of a wider range of interest, with both those that favor a more socially conservative society, and also those who are more socially progressive, and want less government interference in social affairs. All three parties are, however, much closer to each other than PS and Verut are to each other. The main criticism of the Liberals are similar to criticisms of other Liberal parties throughout Europe. The Liberals are seen as representing the rich and powerful and the interests of corporations and don't really care about people who are worse off in society. The Liberals are also seen as just being too in the middle, not being socially conservative enough for those on the right, and not progressive enough for those on the left. Belgian Liberals historically had a very anti-church and anti-clerical streak, so I imagine more Christian voters may not feel too fondly about the Liberals. Finally, while not as corrupt as the Social Democrats, the Liberals have had their fair share of corruption scandals, such as recently one member of one of the parties stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars in government funds to renovate her house. Next we go to the Green Bloc. There is the Dutch Grun, or Green Party, and then there is the French and German, Ecologiste Confederales pour les Organisations de Lutz Originales or Confederate Ecologists for the Organization of Original Struggles, or just simply Ecolo. The Green Parties are environmentalist parties, sitting to the left of the Social Democrats. This bloc compared to the other blocs is very new, with both parties having their origins only in the 70s and 80s. They tend to get most support among younger voters, university students, immigrants, artists, and cultural figures, and those in urban areas, particularly in Brussels and eastern Wallonia. Ecolo has 13 representatives, 5 senators, is a part of the Brussels, Wallonia, and French community governments, is present in the German community parliament, and sends two members to EU parliament. Rune has 8 representatives, 4 senators, is a part of the government in Brussels, is present in the Flemish parliament, and sends one member to EU parliament, with both parties sitting in the Green slash European Free Alliance group, and both a part of the federal government. Ecolo is headed by Raja Moan, a former member of the Brussels and French Community Parliament, and Jean-Marc Loet, a former representative and the French Community's Minister of Children. Rune is led by Marianne Almache, a former representative and current member of Flemish Parliament, although she is apparently stepping down soon. The Greens are very focused on fighting climate change. They want to make Belgium 100%, or mostly, run on renewable energy by 2050, oppose nuclear power, back a carbon tax, wants to create more nature reserves in Belgium, and supports making train travel more accessible and easier. They also are socially progressive, backing greater LGBTQ rights, wants to make it easier for asylum seekers to enter the country, wants to lower the voting age to 16, and wants to do more to address gender inequality, especially in politics. They also are both pro-EU, want to make it easier to hold referendums, want to establish a federal constituency, back progressive taxes, and wants to increase state pensions. Now, even though both Ecolo and Grun are different parties, they are very similar, and are usually considered sister parties of each other. Both have strong links to each other and work together all the time. Looking at their policies on their website, you'll note they are saying almost exactly the same thing a lot of the time. There are differences, however. For example, Ecolo talks about finding alternatives to prison, while Grun, on the other hand, talks about increasing the number of police in the streets. Ecolo is considered more ideologically pure, while Grun is considered more pragmatic. This isn't entirely contradictory, and overall these differences are relatively minor, but they do still represent a difference. The Greens' problems tend to stem from their age. 
The Greens, compared to the other blocs, and even some of the other parties we will talk about, have their origins relatively recently. They are seen as being inexperienced, unrealistic, and not really knowing what they are doing. Many on the right will point to them as annoying virtue-signaling hippies, and claim they are just useful idiots for the Social Democrats, who they tend to support. There also has been several controversies around several members of the Green Bloc promoting pro-Palestinian statements, which some Jewish groups have interpreted as being anti-Semitic, such as Milan sharing a post that showed a Palestinian using a sling with pro-Hezbollah music in the background. The last political bloc we will talk about is the Christian Democratic bloc. There is the Dutch Christian Democratic in Flams, or Christian Democratic in Flemish, or CD&V, the French Les Engagés, or the Committed Ones, or LE, and the German Christlich Social Partei, or Christian Social Party, or CSP. The Christian Democrats come from the Catholic political pillar that emerged after Belgian independence. The pillar split in 1968, and today the Christian Democrats are all in a kind of weird space. The Dutch and German Christian Democrats occupy a more center-right position, while the French Christian Democrats at first move left, embracing Christian humanist beliefs. In March of this year, it changed its name from the Humanist Democratic Center to its current name in hope of rebranding itself as... something. For reasons I'll talk about later on. The Christian Democrats tend to do well in rural areas among older voters, more religious voters in Flanders, those in Christian labor unions, and in Luxembourg province, Limburg, or western Flanders. CD&V has 12 representatives, 5 senators, is a part of the government in Flanders, is present in the Brussels parliament, and sends two members to EU parliament, while also being a part of the federal government. LE has 5 representatives, 2 senators, is present in the Brussels, Wallonia, and the French community parliaments, and sends one member to EU parliament. CSP is the largest opposition party in the German community parliament, and sends one member to EU Parliament, with all three parties sitting in the European People's Party group. CD&V is led by Joachim Kunz, the mayor of Danmin, and former member of Flemish Parliament. Also, there is a joke that if there was a factory that produced Christian Democratic politicians, Kunz would probably be what came out of that factory. LE is led by Maxime Prévost, the mayor of Namur, and a former member of the Wallonian Parliament. CSP is led by Jérôme Franzen, the mayor of Rarnen, and former member of the German Community Parliament. The Christian Democrats tend to be socially conservative, back a mixed economy, and you can find them often trying to present themselves as centrist. However, you can find the CD and V and LE talking about giving greater rights to the LGBTQ community on their websites, and you can find them talking about reducing taxes to encourage economic growth. They are both pro-EU and pro-NATO, and tend to oppose separatism in Belgium. Now, the Christian Democrats are less like a political bloc with roughly similar ideologies and more like far-off political cousins. The French Christian Democrats have, as mentioned earlier, moved more to the left embracing a strong welfare state and have, with their latest change, really abandoned their roots as a Christian party in hopes of appealing to a wider support base due to having both already a small support base in Wallonia and also their support base dying off. The German Christian Democrats are relatively powerful within their community, and try to present themselves as a pragmatic center, and being the party that historically fought for their community at the federal level. CD&V, however, is more to the right. Wanting migrants to assimilate into Flemish society, favor a stronger police force, and opposing, slash not wanting to expand, abortion and euthanasia. CD&V also is more willing to embrace Flemish nationalism, with it wanting greater autonomy for Flanders and more protections to the Dutch community. Now for problems in the Christian Democrats, it's easier if I just go through them one by one. CSP has been steadily losing votes election on election, and I suspect it's largely due to Christian Democratic thought, losing ground throughout Europe, and being seen as too old-fashioned. Also, they are a German party, so nobody really pays attention to them. Christian Democrats being seen as too old-fashioned also plague the C, D, and V, while they are still a powerful force in Flemish politics, usually able to work their way into government, they are still losing ground election on election, and are seen as being too unwilling to rock the boat and make vital changes needed for Belgium to continue to function for fear of negative backlash. Finally, LE is really suffering through an identity crisis. People tend to complain that nobody really knows what they stand for anymore, and are just desperate to not drop below the 5% electoral threshold. So with that, we are done talking about the political blocs, 
and we'll move on to individual political parties. We go first to the New Vlaams Alliantie, or New Flemish Alliance, or NVA. The NVA is a Flanders-based party, arguing for Flemish independence, and is currently the largest opposition party. It is considered center-right and conservative. It initially sought to appeal to Flemish separatists across the political spectrum, hoping for a Big Ten approach to get Flanders to leave Belgium, and was pro-EU. However, starting in 2004, it moved to the right, embracing more conservative political positions. Its supporters tend to be based in rural areas, especially in the north. The NVA has 24 representatives, 9 senators, is a part of the government in Flanders, is present in the Brussels Parliament, and sends three members to EU Parliament, who sit in the European Conservative and Reformist Group. The Minister President of Flanders is also a member of the party. It is currently headed by Bart de Wever, the Mayor of Antwerp, and a member of Flemish Parliament. The NVA is a Flemish Nationalist Party. It wants Flanders to break away from Belgium and form a confederation with Wallonia, wants to do more to protect the Dutch language, wants to ensure school children are speaking Dutch when in school, favors more autonomy, and wants to ensure public servants in Brussels can speak both Dutch and French. It also is nationalistic to a certain degree socially, wanting refugees to assimilate into Flemish society, wants to do more to protect Flemish cultural artifacts in museums, wants a stronger police force, and is hostile towards further economic or political integration. However, it does still back further EU integration in terms of security concerns, is pro-NATO, and opposes homophobia. It also opposes the monarch, is pro-business, and favors lowering taxes, and is supportive of a European-wide Green Deal. There are several problems plaguing the NVA. First off, the NVA is the party with a decent amount of factionalism. There are moderates who want a more centrist and pragmatic Flemish nationalism, and those who want to move right and embrace more populist ideas. So far, de Wever as party leader has been able to keep the party in check, but there are fears that when he goes away, the party may explode and split, with party members merging into other parties. There is even talk of combining the NVA and the CD&V into one big party. There also is dislike towards the NVA among more radical Flemish nationalists, seeing them as too willing to work with French and Unionist parties, and also Belgian nationalists, who may feel the party is trying to destroy Belgium. Those more radical Flemish nationalists tend to find a home in Flams Belang, or Flemish Interest, or VB. VB is a hard-right Flemish nationalist and right-wing populist party. It represents the more right-wing and unapologetically separatist force in the Flemish independence movement when compared to the NVA. The party and its predecessor, Flams Bloc, began gaining ground in the 90s, becoming at times the second most voted for party in Flanders. Its supporters tend to be based in eastern Flanders and Limburg. It currently has 18 representatives, seven senators, is present in the Flanders and Brussels parliament, and sends three members to EU parliament who sit in the Identity and Democracy group, it is currently headed by Tom van Grieken, a representative and former member of Flemish Parliament. VB is like the NVA, very much in favor of Flemish nationalism. It wants an independent Flanders, is opposed to the further Frenchification of Brussels, and also backs socially conservative policies, such as opposing further immigration, opposes further LGBTQ rights, is pro-life, opposes euthanasia, and wants a stronger police force. The VB describes itself as pro-European, but opposes further EU integration and wants to return border control to individual member states. It also is in favor of a mixed economy, seemingly backs less bureaucratic regulations on the economy in order to make it easier to invest in Flanders, opposes corruption, generally tends to have a favorable view of Russia, and is pro-Israeli. Dislike towards VB usually stems from people concerned about racism within the party. Vlaams Bloc was known for promoting a more ethno-nationalist form of nationalism, and was legally dissolved in 2004 due to the Court of Appeal ruling that the party had breached anti-racism laws, and the party's members attempting to abandon ship to prevent large fines towards the party. There also are concerns of some party members holding ties to neo-Nazi organizations and pro-apartheid groups. All of this has led to every party in Belgium to form a cordon sanitaire around the party, or essentially, every party has agreed to officially never work with the party, which prevents the party from getting its policies passed, and leads to further distrust towards the party. Admittedly, the party has seen a rise in the polls, Van Grieken has made it a goal to moderate the party, and there has been talk in the NVA and right-wing circles of Open VLD and CD&V of lifting the cordon sanitaire, but even if this were to happen, and VB becomes more normalized, it's likely that they would continue to struggle with its more xenophobic corners and its hostility towards French-speaking parties. The last real major party is unique in Belgium. Parti van der Arbeid van Belle, 
or Labour Party of Belgium, or PTVB, or Parti du Travail du Belic, or Workers' Party of Belgium, or PTB, the acronym I will use to refer to it for the rest of the episode, is the only party that operates in both Flanders and Wallonia. PTB is a left-wing party, representing communist, and more radical socialist and leftist. It was initially a fairly fringe party, However, it began to gain ground in 2014, and nowadays is a significant force throughout Belgium, but especially in Wallonia, in traditional socialist strongholds. It gets most support among those with a lower income, those in unions, and members of the radical intelligentsia. It currently has 12 representatives, 5 senators, is present in the Brussels, Wallonia, Flanders, and French community parliaments, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the left of EU Parliament group. It is currently headed by Raoul Heydebau, a local politician from Liège and a representative. PTB is left-wing in many things, and overall is opposed to the current capitalist status quo. It wants to lower the pension age, wants to raise the wages from workers across the country, wants to remove legal barriers to wage increases, backs progressive taxes, wants to make buying pharmaceutical drugs cheaper, and wants to implement a 30-hour work week. Finally, it is sometimes referred to as the party of automobiles because it is opposed to paid parking, wants to reduce the number of tickets and fines handed out to drivers, and claims carbon taxes don't actually help, but instead punish the working class. It is strongly hostile towards NATO, and doesn't hate the EU, but wants to alter its more capitalist institutions. The party is also opposed to racism, the breakup of Belgium, and wants to boycott Israel. PTB is a rising star in Belgian politics, but it still isn't free from controversy. The party has been accused of holding a foreign policy that boils down to supporting states that are hostile towards America. In the past, and even to a certain extent today, it defended, or at least was apologetic towards, authoritarian left-wing states, such as Maoist China, North Korea, and the Khmer Rouge. When Russia invaded Ukraine, it got flack for abstaining from a vote condemning the Russian invasion. While there isn't an official cordon sanitaire, it is generally accepted there is a de facto agreement to not work with the party, since it is considered too far left and just unrealistic. So we now move on to the minor parties. We go first to Démocratite, Federaliste, Indépendante, or Democratic Federalist Independent, or Defy. Defy is a social liberal, French-speaking party, mostly based around and in Brussels. It was formed to oppose language laws that it perceived to have benefited Dutch speakers over French speakers. It is seen, especially by Dutch speakers, as an anti-Dutch party. Defy was formerly a part of MR, but broke from MR in 2011, and has decided to contest elections on its own since then. It currently has two representatives, is a part of the government in Brussels, and is present in the French community parliament. It is currently headed by Francois de Smet, a representative. Defy wants to do more to protect French speakers in central Brussels. It wants French speakers in not just Brussels, but also in municipalities outside of Brussels that have a large French community to be able to find government services in French and supports a federal Belgium. It also is in favor of a federal Europe, wants to do more to fight illegal animal trafficking, supports more referendums, supports a secular state, and wants to make it easier to immigrate into Belgium. So this is the last party present at the federal level, and it's pretty small. Libertaire Direct Democratisch, or Libertarian Direct Democratic, or LDD, is a libertarian party present in Flanders. It is based around party leader Jean-Marie de Decker. De Decker was a former open VLD, and then NVA politician, who wished to form a party based around free market economics and hostility towards further EU integration and further immigration into Belgium. The party was formerly a minor player in the late 2000s, but it's now mostly irrelevant, except in the city in Milkerk. De Decker was elected as a representative in 2019 on the NVA party list, and it seems like he is planning to step down as a representative at some point, but there is also rumors that De Decker will run next election with his own new political outfit, so who knows. Next we go to pro Deutschbringer Gemeinschaft, or pro-German-speaking community, or pro-DG. Pro-DG is based in the German-speaking areas of Belgium, and was formed to fight for greater rights for the German community, wanting the German community-speaking region of Epon Melody to become its own federal region. It is also sometimes called the NVA of the Germans. Ideologically, it seems to be pretty similar to the CSP, representing moderate Christian Democrats, with its support base primarily in the southern part of Epon Melendi. It currently is the largest governing party in the German Community Parliament, and the current minister-president of the community is a member of the party. It is led by El Kometh, a party activist, and Lisa Schleusen, a member of the German Community Parliament. We go to another party present in the German community, with Vor in Develen, Verarend in Arbeit, Inner Neue Toikmost, 
or for individual freedom and labor in the new future, or Vivant. Vivant is a social liberal party that was originally founded by current party leader and former senator Roland Duchatelite. Its main goals are to set up a universal basic income system for Belgium, once a higher VAT tax while lowering taxes on income, and supports more referendum. It for a brief period was a part of Open VLD, but nowadays is largely just a party operating among German-speaking Belgians, especially in the region of Belgium and Eiffel. It currently has three seats in the German community parliament. Next we go to Agora. Agora is based in the city of Brussels. It criticizes the current representative democracy of Belgium, once a deliberative democracy with greater rights to the people, and has set up the Brussels Citizen Assembly, which elects volunteers via sortation, who will propose policy measures to the party's elected officials. Agora supporters, according to the party, tend to be younger and college-educated. It sounds, based on my conversations with them and the policies on the website, that it is ideologically close to the Green Bloc, but it tries to separate itself from them by arguing solely based on what the Citizen Assembly proposes, and have a horizontal party structure rather than having a top-down structure with powerful party bosses. It has one seat in the Brussels Parliament. So the last party I will talk about is the Union de Francophones, or Union of Francophones, or UF. UF is a party slash coalition of French-speaking parties that operate in the region right outside of Brussels, and seeks to represent French speakers in Flanders. It wants greater protections and rights for this community. This party has some elected officials at the local and provincial level, but is more of an interesting quirk. One notable member is former Prime Minister Sophie Wilms, who ran the country from 2019 to 2020. Also, one of the party's higher-profile members was convicted of killing his lover's husband after said husband found out about the extramarital affair, so that's just a little bit of drama for you. So that ends this episode on Belgian politics. This was a bit of a challenge, just with all the linguistic divides and complicated party politics, but essentially there are the three traditional pillars, the Social Democrats, the Liberals, and the Christian Democrats, along with the newer Green Pillar. Then there are the Flemish Nationalists like NVA and VB, and the Marxist PVDA slash PTB. Finally, there are several other smaller parties that play their own important role at the regional or community level. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Again, I would like to give a big thank you to Ansfried for helping me out. He helped me out throughout the entire process, um, looked over the scripts, so big thank you to him. And then again, I would like to thank Agora for having that interview with me. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope you guys will like the interview when it comes out. So up next, I'll talk about the history of Burkina Faso, um, and that will... I don't really know when that's going to come out. Final, like, senior project for college is a lot of work, but I think Burkina Faso, I could get that done easily, so I just don't really know, like, maybe two or three weeks. And then after that, I'll talk about the Filipino elections that are coming up, so talk about Filipino party politics and kind of the context of that with the presidential election. And then also, I'll talk about Colombian parties, also in the context of the election going on there, and then also with the parliamentary election that happened back in March. So yeah, uh, thank you for listening, thank you for watching. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.